Good morning. I am Forrest Speck, and I'd like to share with you some of my thoughts about the First Religious Society. I was 37 when Ann and I found this place. The qualities that drew me to this church family initially were the freedom from dogma of other churches that I could not believe, and second, the especially fine music program. Now I am almost 80, and over the intervening years I have discovered many other qualities that keep me here. The thoughtful and genuine people, our focus on bettering the lives of others, the generosity of spirit that pervades, the venerable history of almost 300 years, the wisdom from the pulpit, the classical yet adventurous music, and this beautiful sanctuary. Underpinning it all are the qualities of real spirituality and worship that are here every week, wording that we adopted last year in the first of our ends from the Statement of Value, Mission, and Ends. When I sit in Pew 15 with the sun flooding in through the tall and wide welcoming windows, I sense the reverence, the peace, the humility, the humanity and affection shared by the 200 plus congregants seated here. Of course, now I am sitting with Annie in our living room, watching services on the screen. But despite this unfortunate change, we know someday we'll be back in 26 Pleasant Street together. However, these remain the reasons we all give as much as we can to support the First Religious Society and why I am sure we will again this year. Thank you. Why do I support our UU Church? For me, it is about both investment and paying it forward. There was a time when I was the person who was on the receiving end of some deep generosity. It gave me a way out of domestic violence, moving me toward independence. It gave me strength, and especially it brought me hope. I learned that generosity changes lives. I know now that investing in people changes the lives of both the receiver and the giver. When I live in a community of people who are cared about, fed, and have hope, then I live in a community of great wealth. I believe that our FRS church community is that sort of place. I am deeply committed to the idea of welcoming people in all our diversity and creating belonging for one another. And so I'm grateful to belong to this church community that believes in this value enough to have made it one of our ends. I have always needed a spiritual home, a place where I can get quiet enough to feel the presence of the Spirit within me. I am proud of the truth that our church community sees the beauty in the uniqueness of each person. I love that as you use, we can be straight, bi, gay, questioning, and we are all welcome. I give because FRSUU makes space for us all. I give a share, a full share, because I want to know that there will always be a place for a lonely, seeking, scared person to feel welcomed. I believe that our FRS church community is that sort of place. I have had enough life experience now to have times where I gave with a feeling of great abundance and other times when I've held back. I am not always a generous person by nature. I've had an argument with my inner voice every time that the generous side of me wants to give. But in the end, I like myself better when I can close my eyes and ask myself if I have honestly done enough. When I am able to say yes and really mean it, it is then that I like myself the best. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Renee Wolf Foster. I joined FRS in 2018, began working on the Mission Vision Project in April 2019, and became a member of the parish board last year which I think might make me sound very outgoing or very ambitious, and I am not. Before I responded to Kristen Fellhaber's request for volunteers two years ago, I just stared at my computer screen for several minutes. 
I'm not a joiner. I didn't have anybody at FRS except Reverend Rebecca. But her sermons and her kindness had sustained me those past few months, and I wanted to support her. I also don't talk about my life at work. They just want me to be the strong business manager, but with my parents, who need me to be the strong only child. If it weren't for my loving husband, I would do nothing but work and take care of my parents. Talk to my cats. I've never been a part of any kind of community. I didn't have any idea what that might even feel like. I decided it was time I tried to find out, and so I sent that email. The first meeting I went to, I, it was like nothing I'd ever experienced. Each of the other volunteers talked about how much they cared about FRS, how much they wanted to support a strong future for the congregation. They wanted to give their time, energy, anything else they could, joyfully, unabashedly, and with open hearts. And so did I. So I stayed involved with the Mission and Vision work and I'm grateful that I was invited to join the parish board last year. Of all of the ends, the one that I am most drawn to is to support one another in the joys, sorrows, and transitions of our life's journeys. My parents aren't doing so well right now, and I am very grateful for the kindness I've received from other members. We have so much to offer to each other, to our community, and it is so worth our time, our energy, anything else we can give. Good morning. My name is Tina Benick, and I wanted to share with you this morning why I choose to commit and pledge my time and resources to FRS. I came to FRS and Newburyport about two and a half years ago. I did not have UU in my background. I had spent time in and out of various Protestant churches over my lifetime, and I had a generally cordial, if not always close, relationship with them over the years. I knew when I found FRS that I had found an extremely special place. From the beginning, there were many opportunities to connect with others in the congregation. One of the first opportunities was an invitation to a fellowship dinner. What a joyful and warm way to be welcomed into the FRS community. From there, many other opportunities to deeply connect were offered. From chalice circles to studying world religions, to being given the opportunity to contribute to the mission vision ends work. Then COVID hit, but our opportunities to connect and be sustained continued. They continued under the steadfast guidance of Reverend Rebecca and the talented FRS leadership staff. These included the End of Policing Study Group, the Seeing White Study Group, and the Anti-Racist Initiative, and also Care Pods, which sprung up in response to COVID. In many of these experiences, I found a community of people willing to share at a vulnerable and authentic level that I had not often previously found. As I thought about these experiences and where they were leading, and as I started to think about pledging and committing this year, I realized that a fundamental shift in my thinking had occurred. Pre-FRS, I had thought of church as being a place where one comes primarily for spiritual sustenance and learning, and not necessarily where the, quote, real work of the world was done. That, I thought, was done by other not-for-profit organizations I volunteered for. With FRS, I came to understand that we are committing not only to do the spiritual work, but we're also committing to take our beliefs and values and apply them, that our work is the real work of the community and the world. It brought into sharp focus the language we have included in our mission vision ends, namely that we seek to, quote, work in partnership as individuals and as a congregation to advance justice and put courageous love and service to our community and the world. This commitment to impacting not only our congregation, but also our community and the world is one of the key reasons I joyfully pledge and commit to FRS. I hope you will consider it too.